This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, it's uh, Friday, it's 11 o'clock, it's Trump week, and I want to say something. Oh, Tim, I want to say this to you. You know, the value of this kind of discussion, this weekly discussion, is that we can get a beat on things. We can sort of do a chart about how, how bad it is and um, whether it's worse than last week and m could it be better the next week and all that. And, you know, and I keep thinking of that old thing that you know, the people talked about, it's a joke, where they said, cheer up, Tim, it could get worse. And sure enough, it gets worse. You know, and that's the value of having a, you know, a weekly show where we can see how, how it works uh, as against last week and the weeks before. <clears throat> and I submit to you that it's getting worse. What we talk about here and the outrage of what he's doing um, is, is greater, more astounding every week. So let's not get caught up in the new normal. Let's always compare how it was before, even back to January 2017, over oh, the good old days. Anyway, Tim, we got so much to talk Morning, about Jay. today. You yeah. know, if we were to graph this new normal, the uh, line going up north on the chart, on the graph, would be off the paper by now. It would be, a yeah. big paper, big yeah. paper. So let's, let's divide the show in two parts. You know, the first part, let's talk about the wall and all the implications and all the machinations. And the second part, we'll talk about the Mueller investigation in Russia, okay? Let's put a couple things in perspective on the wall, because in the last two shows, you and I have discussed that I, I feel that Donald Trump needs the wall as his red meat for his base, mm. and he never really wants to solve it. Mm. And you said every, every would-be dictator needs a scapegoat. Yes. And the wall and immigration and those people yes. are his scapegoats. Absolutely. So I want to read a quote uh, that I found uh, just after he became president in 2016. And it's very interesting because it's very telling on where we are today. So. January 30th, 2016, he was talking about the wall and he said, you know, if it gets a little boring, if I see people starting to sort of maybe thinking about leaving, I can kind of, I can kind of tell what the audience is thinking. I just say, we will build the wall and they go nuts. Wow. Wow, boy. So doesn't that quote really fit to where we are too late, two years yeah. later? That may be the only true thing he said in the past couple of years. Anyway, yeah, absolutely true, and that's what he's doing, stirring the pot, distracting us from all the other things, including Mueller. This wall is really a distraction. But let's talk about what's happening, okay? Um, there's an issue about, is, has he really built any of the wall? And the answer is no, he hasn't. Um, has he, has, does he have the support of the Immigration Service? I don't think he does, except, except the uh, department head. Uh, what's her name? They're calling sick Nielsen. Nielsen. Uh, they're calling in sick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. And, and TSA already is not showing up. They're calling in sick. Um, and uh, and the, the federal employees are selling stuff at garage sales and can't afford to live or pay their mortgages. I mean, the country's coming apart. We're three weeks plus into this ridiculous exercise distraction. But meanwhile, he doubles down. Um, and incredible. And when you... And when you think that he's doubled down, all any human being could double down, you know, the, the pathological side pops up yet again. Triple down. Triple down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now he wants, to, uh, he wants to call a national emergency. Bruce Ackerman of Yale Law School wrote a brief effectively in the New York Times, which was published in various other, um, you know, media, um, for the proposition that that's illegal. It's unconstitutional. According to the Constitution, a, a bunch of statutes a bunch of repeals of statutes and some case law over the, over the last several years, that it's not legal uh, to call a national emergency and take funds that way. Um, he's talked about uh, you know, uh, using the military, using the, you know, the National Guard or the, the Army to actually physically with their hands build the wall. I can see that. They're not being paid, yeah? I can see that with the building the wall. It's not going to work very well. I can see the National Guard on top of a 40-foot wall. Now, there's a boot camp for you. Um, <clears throat> okay, he's been talking about uh, taking, taking the money out of, um, out of disaster relief. We need the money for disaster. He did a terrible job on Puerto Rico. FEMA did a terrible job on Puerto Rico. Now he wants to take that money away and th further impede, uh, you know, the recovery of Puerto Rico. Wow. And other places, too. Remember, we had this fire in California and all. So um, that's another outrageous thing. Uh, are those things uh, less important than the wall? Uh, is the wall, does it cover everything going on in the country? 
And what's really bad, and I keep thinking about this, is that the second villain here is McConnell, who lets this happen. <clears throat> he, gives, uh, he gives Trump, uh, I mean, an arguable political cover by not having, you know, the uh, Senate vote. But you know what? <clears throat> For him to say, I am not going to bring this to the floor of the Senate because if I do that, Trump will veto it, that's a first. That's not yeah. checks and balances. That's not what the Constitution had in mind. That's a violation well, of his, his oath of office, I think. McConnell doesn't want a seat on the floor because he knows very well there will be enough senators to have enough votes to veto, to override President Trump's veto of this. Uh, you know, the House has passed the Senate's bill. Those provisions open up HUD, uh, Department of Agriculture, all these other departments that are not contingent upon immigration or homeland security. Open up the businesses. Well, that's his major lever. And he's using those employees as their pawn, as a pawn, to leverage what he wants. Uh, bottom line is, McConnell knows that there's enough Republican senators who will vote to override. Yeah, I think they and must And that's be. why he won't let on the floor to begin with. And that's, yeah. that yeah. does say something. I've never really seen that before. Yeah, they're breaking away. And if they haven't broken away yet, they're about to break away. I mean, there's so many articles in the paper. Well, so many things are deteriorating around the country for this useless wall. Well, a lot of these senators are from purple states, and their elections come up in 2020. And that's the last thing they, they want is their constituents to remember how they were out of work and the farmers that are in their districts aren't getting their subsidies necessarily. And uh, that's the last thing they need to be reminded about uh, come October, November of 2020. Yeah. I, I think Trump is actually certifiable about this. It's a, it's a Section 8 situation. It's a 25th Amendment, Amendment. situation. Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, he's getting close, really, to an impeachment, not on the basis of all the bad stuff in the Mueller report, but on the basis of what he's doing right now. It's, uh, it's unmanaging the country. The country is really coming apart now. Well, what's, what's been the delta here? What's, what's been the change? You don't have um, General Mattis, and you don't have uh, General John Kelly as bookends to try to corral him. He's, he's untethered. Right. He's all by himself. And a lot of the people in the White House are gone. A lot of the agencies are down to skeleton crew. Uh, and it makes it worse that they're not being paid or they're not there because of the shutdown. I don't know when this is going to get resolved. I see two options. One is status quo continues and it continues to unravel. I don't think that's really an option. The second option is he capitulates. I don't think he's going to capitulate. He's going to triple down. Um, and then triple down is another option. He's just going to do it until everybody just sort of blows up, their heads come apart. Um, <clears throat> and then the last option is, we talked about this before, further distraction, something that distracts us all from the wall. Um, and I, I thought I saw a little of that in, 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 the, in the Saudi, in the, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the Middle East, where he was going to pull out of uh, Syria. And, uh, and then, what's his name, said, no, we're not going to, we're going to do that on a slow bell. Right. And now this morning, there's an article. He keeps calling him paper. Michael Bolton. It's not B Michael Bolton. Bolton said we're going to do it. You know, <laughs> is that really Donald Michael? Donald Trump keeps calling him Michael Bolton. <laughs> so whatever Bolton said, I mean, that's being, that's being modified yet again, because now there's an article that the, tr the troop removal has already started, but they're not going to tell you a date by which it, you know, is going to happen. What's going on here? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's back and forth every day or two, this back and forth. So anyway, I, I, I smell in that the possibility of a distraction by some kind of bizarre action in the, in the Middle East. Um, well, you could what, argue the wall was a distraction, his major distraction. This is distraction from the wall. Yeah. I'm going to take our attention So it's a off distraction the from the distraction. That's it. So what do you think? Which one? Lead? Double, triple down and keep on plugging? He'll triple down. He'll triple down. But and what about my distraction theory? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what he's, the, he's really, really good at that. Um, you know, don't look over here. Don't look over here. Certainly don't look behind the curtain. Um, like a magic no, he's trick. a master at distraction yeah. and the shiny object. And I, I think your, your theory has some merit to it. So what about uh, the Chuck and Nancy show? Uh, they've, been, they've been pretty strong. I, you know, I mean, if, if I was sending them letters, I would give them complimentary well, letters. He cornered himself and they're, they're enjoying the show. He put himself in a corner at that meeting with uh, Vice President Pence, yeah. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, yeah. you can see the grin. They're trying to bite their lip because they're, they're trying to hold back laughing. Well, Chuck when, is an uh, old-time lawyer. 
When, and yeah, so he saw it happen and unfold right before the American yeah. public, and he's biting his lip to keep from smiling. And yeah. Donald Trump says, "I'll take the mantle and I'll I'll claim this as you know I'll be responsible for yeah. it." Yeah. What yeah. a perfect give a gimme! It was a perfect yeah. gimme. You think they're they weak? They're going to weaken the two of them, Chuck and Nancy. You know, and sometimes it comes down to who blinks first. You already see the Republican side starting to crumble, so that gives them probably more motivation not to crumble. You don't hear any, any, anything about the Democrat side crumbling. Yeah. Well, particularly when they're saying, we are doing the best we can to open the government. We've just passed two different laws and in the they House, are. and they were the Senate bills. So we're taking it back to the Senate. Take it back to the Senate. And who's not going to entertain it? McConnell. Who's a McConnell? He's a Republican. Who's he represent? All the Republican senators. You know, um, yeah. w what a gimme. Yeah. What a political godsend. It's a blink first thing. But, you know, they are getting, you know, they're getting the calls and they're seeing the realities of their constituents. They're out of work. They're not, you know, we've seen these uh, time and time again play out in all the news stations of what's hit hitting on the local level of these employees being out of work. Yeah, yeah. Or worse yet, the 380,000 who are furloughed. They're not going to get any money back. They're just out of work. And yeah, they're so, selling you know, their goods at garage sales. Yeah, they're, you know, a, I've got an article here about what the U.S. Coast Guard is suggesting. Uh, there's helpful tints. Uh, I saw that. Uh, it was in the paper, yeah. How, you know, babysit, have garage sales, um, you know, crazy things like it's that. It's humiliating. It's humiliating. Yeah. yeah. These are perfectly middle class people working hard, doing career, doing the right thing, and now they're, they're, forced, to, they're forced to become poor. Can I take two steps back for a second? Because what my, it makes my mouth drop each and every time. I don't know if you want to use Kellyanne Conway's um, term, um, alternative facts. I don't know if you want to use um, Samuel Clemens or um, old statement that there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. Um, whatever you want to use. I just call them bold-faced lies. But when Donald Trump says, I never said Mexico was going to pay for the wall. She was. You know, how I many, 200, over 200 him. times? He's, he, over 200 times he said that Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah. I saw an interview with him and uh, Sean Hannity. It was a town hall meeting during the uh, campaign. And he said, well, you know, Mexico is going to pay for this wall. And Sean Hannity said specifically, you mean they're going to write a check? And um, <laughs> Donald Trump said, um, obviously, the, well, this is what he said first. Obviously, they're not going to write a check, but they are going to pay for the wall indirectly. Many times over and really great trade deal that we just made. Okay, this is what he said in uh, McAllen, Texas, when he just visited the wall here this week. But the bottom line is, he said on Sean Hannity, um, yeah, they're gonna pay in the form or another, they might even write a check by the time they see what happens. So he literally said they, they're gonna just, probably just, write a check. a threat, an extortive threat. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, everyone bought it. Yeah, well, Everyone bought it. you know, there's a piece in the morning paper uh, in the Times uh, to the effect that uh, these media, mainly Fox, are still behind him on the wall. They're still mm, not Chris Wallace. Oh, good. That's an exception. Not Chris yeah. Wallace, but I got to tell you. Here's a shout out to Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace, um, and boy, did he not mess around with uh, Sarah Saunders. You know, because they've been using that lies, damn lies, and statistics routine. Yeah. 4,000 terrorists, you know, are, are coming up to the southern border. And uh, she no sooner mentioned that, and Chris Wallace goes, I studied up on this one. He goes, most of those people who are on a watch list, they're not terrorists, they're just on a watch list, have been apprehended or contacted or, you know, prevented from traveling on at U.S. airports. Right. Most of them. At ports of entry, right. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's, what, and that's the truth. And boy, you know, was she stammering and stuttering to figure out, now what do I say? No, she's a... She's, you know, I, she's part. She's <laughs> part of the tissue of lies. You know, you can't give her any better than that. But uh, in, in the background of all this, or we're sort of a, we're playing at the same time, is uh, the, the thing about the tariffs. You know, I remember. I think it was sixty minutes. They were interviewing some farmer in the Midwest, and they said, "Well, how long? I mean, are you willing to support Trump indefinitely on the tariffs?" And the guy says, "No." He says, uh, "Up to a point, we will. We'll give him a break. We'll give him time." I, think I saw we'll, that one. Yeah, yeah, but but after after that period, after a sort of tipping point, we're not going to be behind him anymore. And um, when's the tipping point? And he said it was like three or four months or December. That's my recollection. December. In December, we're going to take a hard look at this, and we're going to see whether we want to support him anymore on it. Well, December's passed. The tariffs are still wrecking havoc with our economy, and um, I'm, I think these guys must remember that. Must have had a, a sort of common feeling about it, and. I, 
And I think the farmers and all the, all the guys in that area of the country, in that part of the economy, they're probably saying, we got to get out of this one. This isn't working for right. us. It doesn't matter if you're a federal employee on furlough or you know, just not getting a paycheck but being required to work. All 800,000 are being used as a pawn in this political gamemanship of, of Donald Trump. Yeah. But when you start doing that with farmers, and remember, because of the tariffs, what were the farmers supposed to receive? Subsidies. Guess what's shut down? Department subsidies. Of, yeah, Department of Agriculture. How are they getting their subsidies? They are must they getting be them? really ticked off by now. Well, when you're being used as a pawn, um, yeah. that's not, farmers don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. They don't, they don't appreciate For that. For a project that really has no validity, no usefulness, I mean, where did that come from? Maybe, maybe some advisor told them that, but it isn't, it isn't 30% of the country. It is not 30% of the country. Yeah. Let's go to our second topic, okay? Mueller, another backdrop, another parallel thread that's happening here. And, you know, you could make the case pretty well that all of this, the tariffs um, and the wall and the machinations around how to pay for it, they're all a distraction from the real issue, which is Mueller. Because where there is smoke, there is probably fire. Um, God knows what Mueller is going to come up with, but it's coming closer now. You know, I mean, I think there were, people were making these, these predictions that February would be the time we'd hear more about it. I, I think that may be right. Uh, so what's happening with Mueller? Again, he's very, very judicious on how he's laying this out. Um, he's not out there in the airwaves. And I think we'll know more from Michael Cohen on February the 7th than we will from Mueller because he's not letting anything out. You know, we'll talk about Michael Cohen a little bit later in the show, but um, you know, he, that's going to be a show on shows. What, well, is what there Michael something Cohen... there that we haven't heard before? You think? Yeah, yeah. So, but didn't he put it yes. all in no. by way of affidavit? And... I, 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 well, and who's seen the affidavits? <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're all been redacted. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. yeah, okay. You know, this is going to be, they call it the John D moment. Well, <laughs> guess what? John Dean was not that close to Richard Nixon. This wasn't. Yes, he was his attorney, but he wasn't close. John Michael Dean has been on the television. Yes, right? he, he has. Um, making comments against Trump on a regular basis. Yes, he I'm has. Like the Republican, but, Republican. I mean, take John Dean and, 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 and exponentially put it to the seventh power. That's what Michael Cohen's going to be able to say in front of the House Oversight Committee. And it's going to be a barn burner. I, that's my prediction. It's going to be, we're going to hear things going, really? Yeah. Is that right? It's going to connect Trump with all kinds of bad deeds. So, you know, this might be getting a hell of a little bit of um, the Mueller report, but um, Elijah Cummings, again, who's, who's, he's the chair of the Oversight Committee, said, in no way will Michael Cohen's um, testimony before the committee going to interfere with a criminal investigation. So we'll see. So we'll see what else is going to come up. Yeah, and I, I suspect that we'll we'll get some real, some real surprises. So what do you think the connection is? I mean, the de facto going forward connection is between the Mueller investigation and all the other sixteen other investigations, plus all the investigations the, the Democrats will initiate now that they control the House. There's got to be more coming down the pike. Maybe redundant, maybe new material. Who knows what? All these witnesses are going to be appearing. And it's all going to be coming out. I think the Democrats will be very open about it. So we'll hear a lot yeah. more. Well, there's soon. a thousand, well, you know, to bastardize <laughs> President Bush's thousand points of lights. Um, there's a thousand points of evidence and they're all starting to connect. And I think that's what we're going to really start seeing is the connection points of these thousand points of evidence. So what about, what about uh, my friend uh, Rachel Maddow and her discovery, her, um, her revelation uh, that uh, Trump, Trump was getting uh, stovepipe information from Putin. Uh, I think we talked about that before. A little bit yesterday, uh, and, last week, and yeah. since that time, and it was kind of a first by her, I think. Right, and then she did the research. new sources uh, have caught up to it, yeah. Right, and now it's all over the place, and it, it's, it begins to make sense that then and now he's been getting information, sometimes illegally, um, from Putin and his friends, and, and he, he believes it, or he is saying he believes it for political reasons. Um, this is very interesting because I think this plays very close to what Mueller is getting at. It's, it's well, at least well, circumstantial well, that yeah. Bush had an inappropriate relationship yeah. with the Russians. Uh, you know, when you, your, your, your day's agenda is set Did by... I say Bush? Trump had Trump, an inappropriate okay. <laughs> relationship with, <laughs> that's right. with the Russians. You know, when you get your agenda set by Fox and Friends every morning, um, it's no wonder that whatever uh, Vladimir Putin is, is going to say is, you know, the second part of your agenda is being set. You know, he's, you know, between the Inquirer, 
Fox and Friends, and God knows what he hears on the telephone line yeah, from yeah. Putin. Who knows what he's taking in as, as gospel fact? His past is catching up with him, but we don't, we don't know up. it all yet. We don't know about the, the steel dos dossier, about what he was well, doing. Well, they tried to in, discredit that 100%, but can't be discredited well, 100%. I don't discredit. You discredit that? I mean, it sounds all very well, possible for me. Yeah. I was an intelligence agent. Uh, the, I think the only point of discredit, it was done at the request and probably at the expense of the, Dems, of the Democrats. Democrats. It yeah. doesn't mean it's a, it's, it's a lie. Yeah. It could be true. Yeah. I, don't, you know, I, I don't discredit it. I think it's true, or at least large parts of it are true. So I, you know, I, I'm going back to the first part of this conversation is of distraction of the distraction. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. And we're going to see more of it. Yeah. Um, you know, it depends on to what degree he has to wedge himself out of the corner on the wall funding and what he actually gets as an agreement from the Democrats. I think something will happen. I don't know. Do you have any predictions on how long this is going to last? Well, I wanted to ask you that. I mean, let me ask you about that. We're, we talked about the, the time continuum, you know, how we here in Trump Week ought to check back on how it was before. We also had, ought to look on how it will be later. And I think there are certain sea changes, uh, short-term sea changes, that are emerging from the things we talk about. Number one is he's losing the support of the, um, of the Republicans. Two is the Democrats are pretty solid in their I opposition to the wall. I think he sees that. I think that. a lot of people in government are in, in opposition to uh, his uh, shutdown. And, um, and for that matter, you know, the, the tariffs. These things are, not, are showing themselves as not to be sustainable. And therefore, uh, the double down thing that he does is showing itself to be not sustainable. And so you, you see this is all fraying, right? And you see he's doing more bizarre things, more unbelievable distractions. Um, and all the while, Mueller. Mueller going forward. Mueller, who may have smoking guns galore. We're going to find that out. And I guess um, the question is, uh, if we're looking at the direction of all of this right now, it seems to me that the direction is, uh, in my view, positive. In other words, he's getting found out. He, the, the reality is coming in. The negative is that he's taking more and more control, a la dictatorship kind of control, of the United States government. Well, that's why the national emergency bugs me a little a bit. Big deal. Yeah, right. that bugs me because to what degree do you start just declaring a national emergency, emergency for every 20, 20 seconds? You know, this is an emergency. That's an emergency. I'm not getting cooperation from the Democrats on this issue. That's an emergency. In fact, Fox and Friends made a very funny comment. They didn't like this national emergency idea. And they said, well, what's to prevent a future Democratic president from saying climate change is a national emergency and start doing all sorts of institutional changes um, on a presidential basis of authority? You know, that's, that's, that would be defensible. It is a national yeah. emergency. It's so the I think that's most why, important thing of all, and Trump doesn't care anything about it. And I think that's why a lot of Republicans are going, well, you know, not so fast here on this national emergency business, because it's kind of like the um, getting rid of the... Um, the uh, the Senate, um, oh, the, the the ability to filibuster. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we don't want to get rid of that because we know someday we're not going to be in charge of the Senate. We know someday it's going to be you know it's going to be the Democrats that have this. Yeah. So we're going to want to have that that option. And so if we get rid of that, what's that going to mean for us during that four or eight years in the future? It's no different for about a national emergency of declaring it willy nilly and having it come back to haunt you four or eight years later. The other sea change, I think, is, I think it's worthy to stop on this one, um, is, is democracy and the Constitution in general and the way we have done government uh, in this country and the way we are, um, the way that's uh, declining, depreciating, fragmenting right now. And that's a sea change really to watch because that's the most dangerous sea change of all, short of climate change, of course. Right. <laughs> That's the one, that's the one that could bring us down. And in bringing us down, it could bring the whole world down. And he's already chipping away at it. And he's chipping away at it. In very, very different areas. And so, yeah. um, you know, if it gets to a, a, a 25th Amendment, or if it gets to a Section 8 situation, or if it gets to, we find out that he's done something so bad that it has to, you know, lead to uh, impeach serious impeachment proceedings, and then we're going to see the rubber meet the road because he's not going to accede to that. He's going to double down on yeah, that. Yeah, he'll too. fight it to the nth degree. Yeah. We have to keep on talking about this. And you should keep on looking at Fox News just to check. You have to. This is a balanced discussion because, yeah, well, because Tim looks at Fox News. I do. He wants to hear the other I, side. I do. I have to. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you so Tim much. Tim Appenshella, Trump Week. Appreciate it. <laughs>